Okay, today we're going to be talking about arrows. This is a very opinionated topic. There's lots of rabbit holes. We're going to try and cover everything. Basically comes down to this. Shoot what you like. There's long arrows, there's short arrows, there's heavy arrows, there's thin arrows, there's fat arrows, there's skinny arrows. There's arrows of every type. The trick is finding what arrow works best with your bow. That is your number one concern. Everything else is secondary. I urge you to research the different arrow companies, see what you like. If you don't know anything at all, that's perfectly fine. There are many different companies that make different types of arrows that you will definitely find something that works well for you. Easton Archery is one of the top brands on the market. That is what I shoot. I have zero experience with any other type of arrow other than the Victory RIP arrows when I shot my son's arrows a couple times. I have only shot Easton arrows. I can only comment on Easton arrows. That is what I know. There are many different companies. There's Easton, Black Eagle, Carbon Express, Victory, Gold Tip, Day 6, just to name a few. All of these companies will have different weighted arrows, different spines, and the trick is to find the correct spine that is suited for your bow that you are shooting. Arrows are made of different materials. This is a carbon arrow. Generally, arrows are made in aluminum, carbon, or an aluminum-carbon mixture. This is an all-carbon arrow. It flexes, it retains its shape. If it hits something, it generally bounces back. That's what we want. Usually, uh, when it comes to the aluminum arrows, they've been very popular with the target community. We're shooting indoors and shooting at targets that are fixed and not moving. There's also aluminum and carbon arrows that are mixed together so you'll have a carbon core with aluminum over the top. Uh, the only issue that I personally have with those is that the more impact they take it could damage the aluminum over the top which would cause the arrow to not be able to bounce back from its bend and it'll start to wobble because it won't be shooting straight anymore. That's my main concern with those. That's why I choose an all carbon shaft. These will also come with different straightness. I know that sounds funny because shouldn't all arrows be straight? Yes, absolutely, they should be. But, diff they'll, but different arrows will come with different straightness tolerances. Generally, they'll come with 0 .003 straightness or 3000 straightness. What that means is that if you were to buy a dozen, the majority of them will be perfectly straight. You may have three of them that are slightly off. They'll still fire okay, they'll still shoot, but they might not group as well downrange as the other ones that are perfectly straight. You can also get 0 .001 straightness, which is 1000 straightness, which is what I use because I find that one out of the dozen will do that. And that's what I want. I want uh, the straightest possible arrows I can get. So for Easton, they they make up match grade, which is 0 .001 straightness. That's what I use. These particular ones are not the match grade uh, version. They shoot just fine as well. But uh, moving forward, I used the 260 spine with the match grade, and they were great. And I'm going to go back to those when I buy more 300s. I think I'm going to stick to the 300s to build up more weight on the end as opposed to having overall heavy weight. The spine has to do with the amount of flex that an arrow has. Every arrow will flex as it comes out of the bow and flies downrange until it hits the target. Depending on the spine that you have, that will determine the amount of flex that your arrow has. This is an Easton Axis 5mm arrow. It's a 300 spine. There's 400, there's 340, there's 300, there's 260. The 400s are going to bend a lot more than this is. The 340s less, the 300s like I just showed you now, and the 260s are stiffer than this. So it all comes down to the amount of weight that you're pulling on your arrow and how heavy overall weight you want your arrow to be. Arrows are measured in grains. So this particular Easton Axis arrow that is a 300 spine 
is 10.7 grains per inch. Now every arrow will say on it, generally somewhere on the shaft will say how many grains per inch this overall shaft is. Every company will have an arrow chart. Go to the website, scroll down on the chart, plug in the poundage for your bow. I'm shooting a Prime Nexus 4. This is 70 pounds, 30 inch draw. You need to know the weight, 70 pounds. You need to know the speed. The overall speed of this bow is 345 feet per second. Now I know that depending on the size of the arrow that you shoot, you're not going to get speeds like that. Nobody will get the posted speed of what their bow is unless they're shooting a 350 grain arrow or less. Because the speed, when they measure bow speed, they're using a 350 grain arrow. And I find that most times when companies will do, or people will, will do speed tests with a 350 grain arrow after these bows come out, they don't necessarily always reach the posted speed that the manufacturer is putting out. So you need to know your speed, you need to know your poundage, go to the website of whatever arrow company you're looking at or go to all of them and try them out. Generally, this is not for every case, but generally the higher the spine number, the more flex you're going to have, the lighter the arrow is going to be. On those charts, across the top you will see arrow length and down the side you will see your bow poundage. Arrow length is measured from the throat of the knock, which is right in here where the knock connects to the string, down to the tip of the arrow, which is here. That is your overall measurement of what they're asking you to plug into those charts. Now, you're going to ask, well, how do I know how long my arrow should be? Well, that depends on your draw length and where your rest is sitting on your bow. For me, I'm shooting a drop away rest that sits behind the shelf of the bow. My arrows come to, my arrows will come to about here, around the middle of the shelf or between the middle and the most forward part of the shelf. For the, I have them that short because the shorter they are, the stiffer they are, the less flex they're going to have. Also, you don't want them so short that they could end up going down into your hand when you shoot. Some people say they should come to exactly the end. Some people say they should stick out. Again, that's all personal preference. Generally, arrows will come 34 between 32 and 34 inches overall length and they're going to need to be cut depending on what size of arrow you want what length of arrow you want excuse me depending on what length of arrow you want another thing to do is to put an arrow on your bow draw back at the full length and have somebody stand in front of you and mark on the arrow with a sharpie or some sort of marker where the spot is that you want them cut for me, it's 28 inches. I know that 28 inches fits perfectly on my bow and it's the right size that I want. The shop that you order your arrows from will cut them to size and then you can either put the inserts in and build them yourself or you can have the shop build them. Arrows can will come pre-fletched uh, in packages of 6 or 12. Generally they're sold in a dozen, but you can get half dozens as well. This I've done myself. I've put, my, I've put a wrap on and I've put these AAE Max Stealth veins on. I, I prefer the longer lower profile vein to the standard ones that come in the store, which are generally like a blazer vein that are shorter but a higher profile. I find that those make too much noise downrange when I was filming with them you could hear the arrow coming before it hit the target and I find that these are a lot quieter. Once you've gone on the chart and you've plugged in I know for the I know for the Easton Archery page they've changed it from a chart to 
um, to a calculator where you plug in your numbers and you hit submit and then they will tell you what spine you should be looking at for their lineup of arrows depending on your bow poundage and the speed of your bow. From there you're going to have to decide how much weight you want to put. How, what kind of overall weight do you want? Generally, in general terms, arrows will usually be built between four, say 420 grains all the way up to 800 plus depending on what you want. The majority of the crowd out there will shoot somewhere between 420 and 500 grains being on the top end. I like heavy arrows. I don't like extremely heavy arrows, but I like heavier arrows. These are 604 grains total weight. That can become a problem when you're shooting long distances. So if you were to go out west and shoot on a flatter plane and have and have trajectory be a serious issue for you, you may want to shoot something smaller than that. Generally you will want to shoot something smaller than that, maybe around 475 into the 500s. Um, for the mere fact that you need your arrow to get there faster. I am shooting from a tree stand 20, 30, 40 yards away. I'm not concerned with that. I like the heavier arrows. I like the more penetration, the higher kinetic energy, the more impact. Penetration equals devastation. When you load up the front end with weight, you're getting more FOC, which is front of center. The more front of center that you have at the front, the more impact you're going to have downrange and the more penetration you're going to have. So for me, I've loaded up this front end. So generally, I'll explain a little bit. Arrows have inserts. Generally, you'll have an insert or an outsert. Inserts sit in the arrow, outserts go over top. But either way, it's something for your field point or broadhead to screw into. That's basically the job of the insert. Okay, fits flush. That's what you want. The inserts on the eastern axis five millimeter are recessed into the end of the arrow and they sit about the, about here and they sit about this far down there's different components you can get to protect your arrow this is a iron wheel outfitters impact collar it's 25 grains so I've now added 25 grains onto the end of my arrow the inserts generally weigh around 15 or 16 grains for the standard aluminum ones that come with the package of arrows that you're going to buy. I don't use those. I personally don't use those. I find them to be too light. I want to load up the front end of my arrow. So I have chosen to use brass inserts. Easton makes a 50 to 75 grain brass insert. The overall size is 75 grains, but it's got a part where you can break it off if you want it to be 50. I use the full 75. So I've loaded up 75 grains in the end. I then put this 25 grain collar on top, which is going to protect the end of my arrow from impact. Then you have to think about, well, what size of field point or broadhead am I going to use? Generally, broadheads are sold in 100 and 125 grains. Not all of them though. There are other ones that are 150, 175, 200, 250, 300, you get it, right? These are 150. I've chosen the 150s. So I've loaded up the front end of my arrow. So 75 plus the 25 plus the 150. I've got 250 grains up front. That's just my own personal preference. Some people will think I'm crazy, but that's what I like. Some people will say that's not enough. You should go higher. This is just what I've chosen. Again, it's all opinion. This is all opinion. You can shoot, choose whatever you like. One thing I wanted to mention while I'm editing this, I don't know if I really explained this very well. When it comes to your spine, it is extremely, extremely important that you get the correct spine. If you're not shooting the correct spine, you could be have great technique when the arrow is being released, but you're not getting the results downrange because you are shooting the wrong spine. 
if you're going to overload the front end like I've done, you, you may have to drop down a spine. So for example, if the arrow calculator tells you you need something, say a 340 spine for the bow that you're using, you may have to drop down to a 300 spine because of all the front end weight. So when the arrow comes out of the bow, it's flexing. As it's flying, it's correcting itself and then it's hitting the target. If you have too much front end weight or the wrong spine or both, your arrows are gonna end up in the target in all different ways, shapes, directions, angles, you name it. You need to allow the arrow to have the opportunity to correct itself, find its way and hit the target from where you want it to land. Perfect example is this. This is my daughter's arrow. This is a Easton Carbon Ion. It's a 600 spine. This will bend a lot. It's also 6.4 grains per inch. Okay, this is perfect for her bow because she's shooting approximately 30 to 40 pounds. So it's light. Her bow has the energy to fire this down range and hit the target. She could go slightly heavier, but we had her shoot these through her bow, which are my arrows, which were about 600 grains. They flew about 10 feet and landed on the ground. So if your bow is not, if your arrows are not spined correctly for the bow that you're shooting and you don't have the energy to back the arrow or you have too much energy, there is a way of going backwards. If you have too light of an arrow, you can cause, you can risk some issues with shooting an arrow that's too light. Uh, and you can also have problems with them too heavy. So you gotta find the right spot, which what, what works for you and what works for your bow. I hope I explained that properly. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and we'll get back to the video. Speed for me is not necessarily important. It is to some degree, but it's not an overall deciding factor for me. For some people, they wanna hit certain speeds like 285 feet per second or something of that nature. That's perfectly fine. To do that, you're gonna to have to shoot a smaller or a lighter arrow than what I'm shooting now, or you're gonna to have to have a bow that shoots a higher poundage than what I'm shooting now. 80 pounds, 90 pounds, and so on. So again, it all comes down to personal preference. But if you're sitting anywhere from 475 to 550 range, you're in good shape, in my opinion. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share them with your friends and let me know what you'd like to see next.